guys, welcome back to okay, our my channel, her channel, exactly. Whatever. <laughs> okay, guys, so welcome back. So, um, as you already know, my name is Tammy, and this is Adam or Adas, please. Okay, yeah, so. so on today's well, first of all thank you to all the subscribers new ones old ones whatever thank you so much for the love and the support so today we are bringing you guys tea like from the caption yeah. description you must have seen it but you don't really know what's coming so um from my side um i'll be giving you guys like a uh, comparison from uh, between nigeria and germany see We'll be giving comparisons between Nigeria, Germany, and China. Three. Three. <laughs> hey. We have experience. We are bringing Package. you experiences from everywhere. <laughs> so, guys, we are going to be giving you guys the, like, you know, different tips, comparisons between Nigeria, China, and Germany on, you know, studying in these countries. So, yeah, sit back. Right. As you know, the pen, educational system. As you know, paper just so get your pen down. and your paper make sure Let's begin. you just think down <laughs> That's how you calm yourself down. Okay, so the first one we're talking about duration of study. Okay, so for bachelors, I think since we already have both have experience yeah. studying our bachelors in Nigeria. Nigeria, so we already know that the lowest uh, or the least amount of years for to study a bachelor's degree in Nigeria is four years. In China, do you know? Yeah, in China, so it's also four years okay. for the bachelor's as well. Mm. Four years. Then in Germany, is three years. So the duration differs for mm. the same bachelor's degree, pretty much. So mm. you get four years in Nigeria, and then you get three years. So if you think you want to finish school, sharp, sharp, quick, quick, like you don't want to waste time. Yeah, you Germany is Germany. the place. Yeah. So and and again, just in case you're wondering why why we are making this video, it's just to help you guys. In case you're, you're trying, to, you're contemplating going to you know Germany or China or maybe coming to Nigeria to study. No, don't say or, coming. They're not coming. <laughs> stay okay, stay or going stay to Nigeria, Nigeria because we are not in Nigeria. What do you mean? Nigeria. Foreigners can come. come to Nigeria to study. No, when you say coming, they're not in Nigeria. Like, they're not coming to us. Going, going to, Nigeria to Nigeria to study. <laughs> It's just it's just so that you you know like we are comparing mm -hmm. uh, education in these three countries you know to help you make proper and more informed decisions mm -hmm. yeah bam <laughs> you see it like that <laughs> okay i'm playing too much okay so number two the fees i know you guys like to like money talk like you want to know it not something you're saying like how much how much let's you know mm -hmm. i always give you guys the whole thing so for the fees in Nigeria, how yeah. much did you pay your bachelor's? Let's start, <laughs> let's start with the, the government schools. Okay. I think if you start with state schools are different from federal schools, you know, right? Yeah, like the fees for exactly. The state schools are Actually, that's true. Mm -hmm. The cheapest, I think, in, in in Nigerian universities, like the federal school, the, yeah. the, the, the fees are set to when you went to school, you know Asset. what I mean? In those days. In those days. <laughs> When were students of undergrad? You know, it was like uh, within twenty to fifty k per semester. Per know. year. Per year. Per. Ah! Ah! That's how much now. You hundred euros. Hundred euros. Ah. And, and, and you get my education. This oh my god. <laughs> but then, but then, um, when it has to do with state university, state universities are a little bit different. My younger sister, she's in a state university. Okay. Yeah, and she pays about I think two hundred or a hundred thousand. It depends, like the range. Per year? Yeah, per year. But the cocoa is when you come to private university. Oh my god. Just pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Please let's know that this is in Nigeria. Talking about Nigeria fees Nigeria. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. Nigerian private university. The grade is different as well because mm -hmm. you're going to a school like Madonna, you know, the mm -hmm. fees is all poor, but it's not as up as back up, uh -huh. you know. Levels, huh. levels there are levels to these things, okay. 
but yeah that's that's what it's like going to uh like the fees in nigerian schools state federal and private schools and let's talk about the German system okay so let's get into the german fees so of course the same situation happens like mm -hmm. so for um the public schools there's a different price for the private schools there's a different price mm -hmm. and typically the public schools are cheaper and the private schools are more expensive but mm -hmm. they usually call it free tuition because i mean because what you pay so little it's like it's free but for the private you know just paying too oh my god so for, for germany um <laughs> experience public, <laughs> public schools you pay uh let's say depending on the state city where it is so i realized that that actually differs so for mm -hmm. some states or cities that are cheaper you could pay like um 250 euros per semester mm -hmm. yes while in some other states you could pay up to 350 euros per semester here in berlin is not up to 350 but it's over 300 euros per semester, per semester. Okay. that you pay that's for public so private <laughs> <laughs> okay for the private school believe me you shall pay <laughs> you shall pay <laughs> you shall pay <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is in private school you actually don't pay per semester you pay per year so you should be looking at depending on the private school again mm -hmm. because you know private school the fees differ. we just know that you're going to pay money Sha. you're going to pay a lot of money so um i think it, it ranges from ten thousand euros mm -hmm. to twenty thousand euros depending on the cost too <laughs> See, I went up from three. I'm still talking about hundreds. It went <laughs> <laughs> depending on the course too. If you're going for big head courses like MBA, mm. you shall pay. You shall pay. MBA is like you sweat three thousand euros. Oh my god, that's money. But I also think that okay, well, for, for public, yes, that's for public. No, sorry, that's for private. private sorry, yeah, that's for, for private, private not public, because public is it. It's actually lower. Mm. Though I realize that for MBA. Even in public universities, you, you pay, pay fees, you pay but fees. you definitely exactly. don't pay up to that amount. I think you pay like um about ten thousand to fifteen thousand mm. for MBA in public universities. So, yeah. but while you're looking at all these things, you always remember that they use money to look for money. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you're paying all these things, by the time you graduate, you get the money, money shall come back to you. It's real, no choice. It has to come back home because when you got this money, it will not come back. It has to okay and then for china oh yes <laughs> give us a game <laughs> <laughs> okay then for china the thing is personally i was on a uh, how do you say i was on a scholarship in china, china. so i basically wasn't paying fees but then i know that to pay like the fees in china it's about depending on the school again and mm -hmm. depending on the course you're doing but it's between 10 uh, 10 or eleven thousand yen to twenty thousand yen even in naira ah my dear in naira how are you going to convert this thing because <laughs> convert it to euros then from euros i can't even convert it okay. to euros that's dollars. In, mm, dollars okay yeah in dollars it should be about one thousand six hundred and six dollars like <laughs> eleven thousand eleven thousand yen is like one thousand seven hundred six dollars so so it's actually not bad yeah it's actually not bad and that's for a year, for a year. Mm -hmm. actually so you see it's actually not even bad so it's way cheaper if that's for a year than a private university in germany mm -hmm. so that's actually way cheaper but well so there you have it so if we're converting that to naira literally it should be yeah around um, six hundred and something thousand or seven hundred thousand people you know the exchange rates fluctuates a yeah. lot yeah so. that's for a year so i think that's also cool so if you're checking all about this one so let's go down that's 350 euros is pretty much um so, like, is it 200k, 200K. Is it about about so? something yeah, like about, that mm -hmm. about 200k so imagine mm -hmm. but uh, the thing is that 200k you're paying it per semester so in a year you pay that twice so that's like 400k per year in a public university in germany so do your comparison check your account balance and know which one you like <laughs> the choice is yours exactly the choice okay. is yours <laughs> so number three the teaching pattern, the teaching pattern in these three countries. Oh, beautiful Nigeria. Let's start there. <laughs> so teaching pattern in Nigeria, from my experience, is, uh, was, is, I think they still do the same thing. It was mostly like theory, you know, they just give you like word for word from the, from the books, like textbook meaning, mm -hmm. textbook this, textbook that, te mm -hmm. textbook that. There was really no room for you to 
um, apply it in like a real life setting and all of all those things. So like practical, it was just handout, whatever textbook your lecturer gives you. Give him back his definition during exams and you are good to go. Like don't try to, you know, tackle or challenge or, you know, critique whatever he has said. What yeah. he says is right. There's no... Mm -hmm. There's no other way around it. But then it, it, it actually depends to be, and it depends mm -hmm. on the course. Because for me, mm -hmm. I also went to Nigerian federal school, mm -hmm. and the course I, I did, you can't just give word for word per se. Depend okay. on the lecturers because there's some lecturers that if you give them word for word, believe me, yeah. you're mm -hmm. failing. Yeah. You shall fail that course. Shall fail. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to you have to look for ways around this. They just give you like I say a foundation, and then you have to build on that. So you have to do some research. Or it, the, the bottom line is that it's not really practical. Yeah. Yet. Mm -hmm. You do mostly reading mm -hmm. and then interpreting Cheering, and yeah. then writing. Yeah. yeah. And then for Germany, <coughs> you drill you. Drill us. <laughs> <laughs> Germany is theory, practical, life experience, teamwork. Teamwork. Everything is combined. You do everything, literally. Like so you would they would teach you in the classroom. They would expect you to know how to apply it in a real life setting. You would have to do teamwork, like group work, yeah. presentations, Most all of, of all that. that you will yeah. have so much readings to do. They will give you articles, books, everything. Like you can read mm -hmm. up even, to four <laughs> books for even one YouTube topic. channels. Like what <laughs> YouTube? If you see the 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 channels that I've subscribed to on my YouTube, you will be wondering. All from school, you just school. Believe it. You have to even watch YouTube videos to learn. And then, <laughs> oh god and then sometimes too, they give you editorial like publishing usually if you're doing anything related to you know economics oh. business you go to forbes you you subscribe Have to these newsletters exactly <laughs> um the economist financial times you will read everything you read everything everything well it's good though it gives you <laughs> ah, it gives no. you a proper awareness of what is of, happening you know yes. in the home market mm -hmm. so, so it's not just basically prepared. like being in the school environment it's like knowing how to apply what you're being taught in like your you know the work environment when yeah. you go out of school like being able to just apply yeah. that so yes intense but it's actually worth it like that you know that so basically if someone asks you for example what is the definition of this you're not just giving them the definition, definition. from like textbook you're also giving them based on you, you really experience. have like in-depth knowledge of this thing mm -hmm. so you can tell them and even give them examples of how it can be applied so yeah exactly that and then what i particularly like about the german education is that they emphasize on this working in teams because yeah. You know, at first I was like, why, why, why are you emphasizing so much? Team, you know, right? why, are you, why are you emphasizing so much on working in group and teams and the rest? The thing is, when you come out and then you work in a, sorry, in an organization, mm -hmm. you're working in teams. Yeah. So they're giving you that foundation, you know, from the start. Yeah. How to work with teams, how to work with people from different countries, countries. how to work with people with different emotional, you know, behaving. People that their head is like this and put their head is like this. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yes. <laughs> you, have to, you have to have all that experience. So that when you now come into the job market, like the labor market, when you come into an organization, it doesn't feel foreign yeah, to you. Exactly. Either. You're like really prepared for it. Yeah. So and the China pattern, how's yeah. it done? Okay. For China, the thing is, Chinese people, they give you, they give you all the practicals as well, but it's not as detailed as Germans, I would say. There's like from my own personal experience, so please don't come for me telling me this, mm -hmm. that this was my own personal experience, what I felt when I was there. So the teachers, they, they are very, very committed, you get, and then they try their best to explain as detailed as possible. They give you all the things, but then the, it's not really, they don't really do the group work kind of thing. It's mostly your own individual assignment. So if you don't write the assignment, that's your own personal cup of tea, you get. So you have to figure it out on your own. And then again, they also, um, like, if students don't do well, like generally on an average, students don't do well, it kind of falls back on this teacher. So the teacher, they try as much as possible to give games, activities, exercises, everything it takes to make sure that you understand. Mm -hmm. You get, yeah. So that's how it is in China. So there you have it. So number four. Yeah, number four. Right? Number four, performance. So let's talk about what performance is like in these different countries. So for Nigeria, we have this grading of like A, B, C, D, D e, e, and F. F. But uh, can you remember like the grading? So for A, you I have like hundred percent to seventy 70. for A. Mm -hmm. B, you have from seventy to no, not even seventy, sixty-nine. 
69, sorry, 69 to, to I think 59 or something. 59. Like C, I think from 59. No, okay. from B is 69 to 60. Mm -hmm. Then C is 59 to what is that for? I don't know. <laughs> but you, 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 you get that's not what you are trying to say. <laughs> because I can't remember it, but I know that pretty much if you get a D, which is like 40, mm -hmm. it's still a pass. Mm -hmm. You're still good in Nigerian to go uh, system and all that. So that's pretty much um, that's and pretty much how it is. Because I think with a D from like public university for public university i went to university of portacourt so for public university it was for the university of portacourt because there's only one there's only <laughs> one school i went to in nigeria not plenty so with d you shall go you don't have to receive the exam exactly. or anything so it's, a, it's not a spillover mm. then not even with an e safe can with an e i think you can still go yes yeah, so yeah, an e was go. what safe? an e was like is it dead something Oh God. It's like a zero that is F. <laughs> and that's only when you fail when you have to zero. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, like pretty much that's how it works. But for Germany, hmm. if you get 50, you know to get songs like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you have 50s, let my people go. Like they're just helping you. So for pretty much Germany is in numbers. They use numbers. They don't use ABC. So they yeah. use 1.0, 1.3, 1. 1.7. 1. 2.0, 2.3, and you know the funny 2. thing. 2.7, is... you get 3.0 like that. I know how you're looking at me right now, but you know I can't actually relate Your because different. my school is a French school in ah, Germany, so, so the grading Germany... system is different. Ah, yeah. okay. So, so <laughs> for my school now, you see that's another. That's why we need to let you guys go. This <laughs> is <are> different. <laughs> So for my school, this is how it works, and it's a public school. So this is the typical German system. There's like the 1.0. So typically, you know how your um the grading scale. If the, the grading scale is um you know 1.0 to 5.0, if you have a 5.0 in Nigeria, whatever country, it means that you your score is high. In Germany, it's the other way around. Mm. So when you have a 5.0, it means a fail. That means like you got less than 50 percent. So that's a fail. So if you hear someone says their GPA is five point zero in Germany, they failed. They don't even go to school, <laughs> literally. And if you hear someone says their GPA or their grade for that particular course was one point zero, then that's like from hundred percent to ninety seven. I be, I be ninety five. No, from hundred percent to ninety five. That's a one point zero. Ninety five. Ninety five. Then one point three is from ninety four to ninety. One point seven is from ninety to 85 2.0 is from 85 to 80 2.3 is from 79 to 75 hmm. should i keep going please don't like <laughs> should i keep going so 5.0 is less than 50 4.0 is the least that you can get for you to move forward and 4.0 is 50 so pretty much pass mark is 50 and it still actually means that you basically just you know just kind of found the way and went. So if you get a fifty, don't think that you, you just say that the job, God just help you to kill to pass. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually what it means for like the performance situation in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, for my French school, so I was saying for mm -hmm. French for people, I guess yeah. For so my own for my own school, the we we grade between one to twenty. So the pass mark is actually ten. You get so. Wow. If you have anything below 10, you failed. Everything you should be aiming for above 10. So if, if you have 11, self, you're just let my people go somehow. You get. So if you get, you, you should be looking at 16, 17, 18, wow. 20. Yeah. Whew, whew. That's how it is. <laughs> and it's like for each course, so each course you take, it, you have to at least get 10. Then over what 20. is the GPA pattern like? It's still one to twenty. Is that how they do for yeah, the it's still, yeah, it's still the same one to twenty. Ah. So at the end, they, they give you a transcript and then they do an average of all your courses and the rest. So it has to at least be mm -hmm. above like ten and above. If you have below ten, hmm, my brother, my sister, you shall repeat. Repeat. <laughs> you 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 rewrite the course. Repeat. Yeah. So then what about China? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That was a joke. I don't know. I don't have any experience in China. No, for China, actually, I can't really remember the way they grade, like, for score, if you have to have 10 or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I know that in China, if 
personally okay i was on i was on a scholarship in china right so if you don't pass your scholarship exam hey <laughs> you shall lose your scholarship and if you lose your scholarship your parents will continue they, your parents will not have to pay your fees mm -hmm. or you have to go back home because mm -hmm. you're not allowed to work in china right students are not allowed to work in china so how are you going to you know fend for yourself, for yourself. you get mm -hmm. yeah so but then again because i'm just like, talking from my own you know personal mm -hmm. experience as a scholarship student then then again, the the the, the exam, the scholarship exam, were like in two phases, kind of. So they had the, the I won't call it states. I was under handban, like handban Confucius scholarship. So if you pass in my school, then what we were doing was that if you pass the handban scholarship, and you don't pass your class exams, you would see the the, um, the handban authorities they'll still pay for your school fees and pay for your rent but they won't give you that monthly stipend that usually comes for students and you know you need that monthly stipend because men you need to buy food to eat right mm -hmm. you need to buy one or two things you know you need to you just have money <laughs> you guys you just need to have survive. money to survive <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but if you don't pass if you don't pass your um class exam then it means that man the money is gone but at least if you pass your you know hsk exams and the rest you still have your um you still have your scholarship your school fees and your accommodation paid for however if you go and concentrate only in passing your class mm -hmm. exams and you did not pass your hsk my brother my sister you we have go lost home. everything <laughs> go back home <laughs> you you won't even see stipend not so. school fees nothing okay. so but then, then i just remember you know sometimes again they, they, they can be really gracious that like even if you don't even if um you don't pass the handband exam mm -hmm. and you know you, and you don't have the scholarship they still have some provincial scholarships so the so provincial scholarship is like pay. within the province yeah so it's okay. it won't be as much as you know what they pay what handband pays yeah, but, but at least something. it's something you get so this the, the struggle for students in china especially for um, scholarship students in china it's like it's so real you're not you're not just trying to pass your own class exams you're also trying to pass you know the general exams and everything and ah. i can feel it my, my <laughs> i can't even breathe properly I'm not even you can <laughs> you can feel this so if you see if someone tells you i'm studying in china believe them <laughs> bow for them because they are struggling it's not that i'm studying i'm a scholarship student in china we give them times two times two because <laughs> the stress <laughs> it takes the grace of the lord <laughs> honestly honestly and this is what happens every year so you take these exams every year so you mm. might scale through the first year and then you get to the second year and something happens hmm. which actually now brings us to exam trial which is supposed to be maybe number five. I don't know. I've lost count now, but <laughs> that's another point. Mm. Exam trials. So in Nigeria, um, I can't really remember. I know that um, pretty much you can just keep writing an exam that you feel. There's really no, um, but, there's no limit. It's pretty, okay, if let's say in my 100 level, like my first year, first semester, mm -hmm. I failed this exam, mm -hmm. I have to wait till the next year mm -hmm. first to semester write to write it if and i feel it and i'll move on to the next class and then, come back and then to if i fail it. yes if i fail that one again the next year when i'm now in my third year i can still go back to write it mm -hmm. when i'm in my fourth year i can still, still go, go back, back to write it then i have two extra years that they will give to me even after so you if when you're i have finished everything and i'm still failing year. this one course i have two years to make sure that i get it done mm -hmm. and if in those two years that i don't get it done then that's it like that's the end of um your program like you are done mm -hmm. but so i think it's not really like um number of trials it's more of like they just the duration, give you two yeah. extra years to make sure that you get all of your stuff done and if you don't then you're out yes after graduation after your the year you're supposed to graduate, graduate. Mm -hmm. then here in germany it's three times i think i've said this a lot in my videos but Three, I need to get on that. Three, <laughs> three. You fail an exam one, but the good thing is they give you two exam trials per mm -hmm. semester. So they usually the first exam period and the second exam period. Is that how it works in your school too? Since your school is a French school, <laughs> we need to be sure. Is that yeah. how it works as well? Yeah, they think, yeah, of course. It's still the same thing. Yeah, okay. it's Europe. Okay. <laughs> Europe is a European pattern. Yeah, so there are two so. Um, exam um periods per semester so you have the first and you have the second mm -hmm. if you write an exam in the first exam period and you fail 
you have the second exam period to write it mm -hmm. still in that same semester mm -hmm. and if you fail it again the next time you have to write it is the next year that same semester mm -hmm. so you have only three chances so if you're not sure you're going to pass an exam you can write it maybe the first exam period this time and you feel don't touch don't try don't to do it the second term don't leave it till the next year <laughs> to try when you're you sure you're when you're sure but if you feel like okay you 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 saw your mistakes and everything and you can put yourself together and write it the second time then great mm. but if you fail one exam three times you're done literally <laughs> pack your load and go <laughs> <laughs> You're, li you're literally done. So that's how it works for the exam trials thing. And I think the mm. same way it works in your school. Yeah, yeah, the same thing in my friend's school. Friend school, friend school, yeah. school in okay. Germany. Then in China. Yeah, but then in China, okay, so again, from the perspective of a scholarship, a scholarship student, <laughs> put some respect on me. <laughs> okay. So the thing is, when you're given um, the exam, normally, as I said, you have the handband, like the Confucius HSK exam you're supposed to write. They give you a duration to write the exam. It's supposed to be every year you write the um, language exam. It's the HSK exam. So, if for instance you're supposed to have, for you to enter into the next year, it's going to be say June, and you have from January. You so you have from January to June mm -hmm. to make sure you pass the exam. That's mm -hmm. what happened in my own school. I'm sure yeah. that in different provinces there are different schools. There are different things there. Yeah. But in my own school, you have to pass right from January to july when you're, or june when you're supposed to give them the certificate okay see i have passed this exam mm -hmm. make sure you've passed it exactly. so it depends on how often it, it, it doesn't really matter how often you write some people just write once in january and they're okay fine they pass this you're good to go you don't need to write again but if you fail the exam you keep writing mm -hmm. it until you pass it uh, but make sure you pass it before june the deadline. yeah before the deadline if you don't pass it before the deadline then hmm. Pack your load and go. <laughs> or you call your parents to start sending you school fees. Okay, yeah, so. okay, so I think maybe that should be like. We're almost nearing the end today. Yeah, we're almost at the end, but just keep watching because we are not done with you. So now we'll talk about integration. Integration. I mean, if you're a foreign student who wants to school in Nigeria, now I. We can't actually talk from the perspective of a foreign student in Nigeria because mm -hmm. we are Nigerians. Mm -hmm. But I think we can pretty much say it's easy to integrate in Nigeria, Nigeria as a foreign student. Mm -hmm. Though I didn't really have any foreign students in my class mm -hmm. all through my study in Nigeria. But I knew of people who had foreign students in their yes, class. Okay. And they seem to be okay. They seem to be like doing well, you know getting into the system and mm -hmm. everything so i can't really say much on that like oh what and what it entails mm -hmm. but i pretty much think like nigerians are very hospitable people and so very exactly so in a, in a session where you are not very like they know that you're a foreigner and everything is all new to you of course they would actually be willing to help so, you yeah you know studies and everything show you around so i think somehow so as a foreigner you even you even have a, a kind of preferential treatment, treatment because they just want to show you all the love they have inside of them exactly. they just want to show off that they have so much love so nigeria should be nice to you well in germany <laughs> okay i don't know like okay now this is going to be personal experience i say what i feel she'll say what she feels mm -hmm. for integration in germany i feel like the integration process is not that easy mm -hmm. it's not that easy in the sense that people are not as friendly people are not as hospitable and this is from the perspective of someone living in berlin because i don't know what other cities are like mm -hmm. i just visit but i've never actually had to live there and be a student in the city so i don't know so for um for berlin it's people are not they're not that they don't have your time literally like <laughs> nobody cares okay go do your own thing no one is trying to tell you oh let me help you you know this is a this is a I have, I have no one has that for me no one really had that time to do all of that it was basically me finding my way around trying to gather as much information as i could you know doing my research asking questions mm -hmm. and yeah pretty much but after you've had you know you've kind of like gathered as much information as you can then you would integrate easily because now you know what to be done, what you should do, how you should go about it. And then mm -hmm. you pretty much integrate. And then when you're like into the system, I think that's when you can now, you know, navigate, have friends or whatever that thing is. But 
that's pretty much my experience. So I will say, oh, as, at the airport, they're telling you, well, what? <laughs> these people are cold. They don't have your time. <laughs> like, so that's it for me. I don't know what our own experience. Well, for me, my own experience is slightly different from yours mm -hmm. because, like, in class, I had really nice classmates, though. They are, they are really, really nice to me. And they were all very <laughs> <friendly>. <laughs> I really, I really, really liked the time I spent with them, you know, having our lectures and all of that. And because we're always working in groups, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're always supporting each other. Especially for me, coming from a whole, like, my background was in languages. Mm -hmm. So I studied English and then I studied Chinese and I'm coming to study business. So when I had to do... So <laughs> when, I, when I had to do, like, some courses that require, you know, mathematics, finance, budgeting, I'm like... What is happening this here? Is, this is not where I belong. <laughs> I give me Chinese, we can roll with it. Don't give me math. <laughs> I was like, I didn't see this coming. Where shall I begin? <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I had like you know some, some of my classmates they already had backgrounds in finance, mm. and so they were really really supportive. So and yeah, I give that one to them. Yeah, so you actually and helped your integration. Yes, they, they, they really helped me my integration and all that. So I didn't. Mm. She had cold experience. Mine was no cold. Very cold. Like freezing. <laughs> freezing cold. <laughs> Mine was no cold at all. Yeah. So then when it comes to China, integrating in China, huh, first and foremost, make sure you know how to speak Chinese. Wow. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because if you're okay now, you know, as far a scholarship student. Again. <laughs> that studied Chinese. Being in class, like they were teaching us with Chinese, so the language of instruction was Chinese. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you didn't know how to speak Chinese, like what will you be doing in that class? Like Absolutely. when they crack jokes, you'll be like, okay, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is laughing, just like, can you like, explain? Or you, or, you, or you just join the laughing trade, <laughs> you know? We don't feel it. So it's really important for you to learn how to, at least to the bare minimum, speak the language. And then some schools, so they stay, offer, um, you know, the language classes and all. For me, before I even started the masters properly, we had this one year language class. So it was just to, you know, give bring us up to speed with you know the with the whole Chinese system and Chinese language and everything. Because imagine doing masters in English naturally. Mm -hmm. Then do, imagine doing it in Chinese. So it's like the level of difficulty is like <laughs> so you have to understand, you have to first of all understand in English before you understand in Chinese and then you know you understand in English and you, you translate to Chinese you get mm. so the level of difficulty was quite different but for people that um actually studied in English there's some people that actually studied in English in China yeah yeah there's some courses that are taught in English, English yeah. but still it's good for you to have at least a little bit of um you know knowledge of, knowledge the, language. of the language like knowledge of Chinese because most of your classmates would probably be Chinese people and even though they might speak like the bare minimum English and all, but when you want to have some group work or maybe some assignment or anything like that, they would prefer to speak in Chinese. And if you're not, if you don't know how to speak Chinese, it might be a little bit difficult for you, yeah, for you to cope. And then again, some courses too. Some some lecturers they try as much as possible to speak English. English okay. Yeah, there are some lecturers that speak good English, and mm. if you're not lucky enough, you might see people that are managing to speak English. They just want to, you know, teach and go. But if you can speak Chinese, you can mm. still go back. Like maybe when you're, when you're teaching, you don't understand the the, the pronunciation, the accent might be difficult for you to get. Mm -hmm. You can still go back and maybe consult some other literature books, okay. yeah, in Chinese, and then you can understand whatever it is I was talking about. Like. So the most important thing is you just have um, the, the Chinese language thingy if you want to really blend. But in Jami, you don't. <laughs> in Jami, you can be comfortable with your English, mm -hmm. especially in Berlin. Hmm. Just move. You can be comfortable with your English. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then. Nothing, yeah. no, nothing spoiled, nothing, nothing we have home. But it's quite intense. <laughs> like, I have headaches thinking about that language. What? No, but Chinese is fun. It's really fun. Yeah, from someone who speaks Chinese, of course. <laughs> I know nothing in Chinese. I can't tell you it's fun. Okay, so that actually brings us to one very important part of studying abroad, which is what's next like yeah what, happens what after are the school? opportunities after school i know everybody wants to hear this so if you've actually watched this video to this point then this is, the this is us telling you we love you from you the bottom of our ins insides <laughs> so what are the opportunities after studying okay so if you're nigerian or you know wherever you're from typical pattern in nigeria is 
you really do not have the um working student opportunity in nigeria you really mm -hmm. do not work while you're a student in nigeria yeah, i think some people still some people because... somehow find a way yeah. around it but it's not like the majority so yeah and majority it's not like of, a thing yeah it's not a thing in nigeria their parents pay for them mm -hmm. so, it's not like so typically people just like do 100 percent um 100 full-time um studying mm -hmm. and then after that they have the nyc thing which after that as well you yeah, apply for jobs and, and then God your hopefully <laughs> you get it that's pretty much the pattern like after mm -hmm. school pattern or you start up a business if you have a great business idea and you have the capital yeah. that's the pattern for nigeria so for germany this is the pattern of course because you're here on a student visa, visa. you have the opportunity these are for nigerians because i think for every country it differs with yeah. what you have so um, as nigerians studying in germany the moment you're done with your program you are eligible for an 18 months work search visa or post study visa, visa however you want to call it yes yeah, so this 18 months visa would give you the opportunity to actually search for a job and work full-time without restrictions so you can work full-time with this visa and when this visa expires by that time of course you would have gotten a job all you need to do is use your job contract to renew your visa which i think pretty much yeah. after that renewal you are eligible for yeah. a permanent residency that's after, how fast it goes after after a couple of years yeah because no when you renew after the 18 months mm -hmm. they give you a certain number of years mm -hmm. sometimes they give you the duration of your passport so if your passport is valid for two years they give you only two, two years, years yeah. and after that you can apply yeah. for a permanent residency depending on the kind of listing that you have because they have the eu blue card no, 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 I'm not talking about even with like with your work this permit. Is permit is usually five years. That's what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. it, it still depends, and also it also depends on your you city have... actually. Because I heard mm -hmm. for some cities, it's very fast for you to actually apply for a permanent okay, residency. You... Mm -hmm. For some cities, they just keep renewing for a while. And then you know, before... get... but at then... least you have the opportunity yeah. to get a permanent residency. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but anyways, the key thing is that they don't chase you back home. You have that eighteen months for you to find your feet in the country and. You know, settlement, get a full time job, and mm. you know, yeah. start your life from there. And something, no. yeah, okay. and something else, like we really need to point out is that even in the 18 months you're looking for a job, it has to be a job in your field. In your field, yeah, very actually. important, yeah, in your field. Because if you if you studied something else and you and you're working, the the job you now finally mm -hmm. get is something entirely different from your field. Yeah, you would have to convince and convince the people yeah. that are giving the visas mm -hmm. that. It's going to be what difficult, you want yeah. because pretty much it's how do you study economics and then you're yeah. getting a job as a bartender and you're telling them that they should give you rest days to stay in their country to do to be a bartender. <laughs> My love, you studied economics. No, that's not your field. Yeah, it's not, it's your not field. for you. <laughs> so no, yeah. it doesn't work that way. And then again, even while you're still in school, you can be a working student. Yeah, you can work yeah. while being in school. So for a lot of people, they have the, this opportunity where. Um, the same company that they were working in while they were students would we offer them a full-time job the moment they know that they are they've graduated. Uh -huh. So I think I would like to say it's a very like linear pattern. It's very straightforward. There's no, you know, mango mango around it. Exactly. Let's, use that one. <laughs> Let's use that one. There's no chain of you have to do this, do this, do this. It's just a very straightforward thing. Yeah. Go to school, graduate. The opportunities are there for you. Yeah, and Simple. then and that good thing too is that the playing field is like very flat. Like yeah, everybody is not by who you know, who you, know, who you don't yeah. know. Yeah, so everyone gets the same opportunity. Exactly, exactly. Then for China, hmm. <laughs> first of all, you are not allowed to work while you're schooling. It's oh against the law. It's against your visa. Like. Students are not allowed to work while going to school. That is one. And number two, when you now finish schooling, they give you just let's just be you know nice one week to pack your things, go back to where you came from. <laughs> your tent or Israel <laughs> return. <laughs> wow. So what even if mean? yeah, even if even if maybe when you came in and when you're graduating, you have like a normally they give you the exact month when you're graduating, your visa expires that exact month. But sometimes you might just be a little bit lucky and then it extends like maybe for one month or maybe for a couple of weeks. Towards your graduation time, you might your your teachers, your uh, lecturers or mm -hmm. whoever it is that's yeah. in charge of foreign students in your school yeah. might be, you know, coming to ask you, so when are you going to leave? <laughs> <laughs> 
a reminder have you, you bought really have you bought your flight ticket back home you know what i mean uh, so that's so sad you, <laughs> the, I, the point is if you're coming to china to study you need to be making plans like back to back once you're done with school, what are you going to do next? It has to be back to back. Some people yeah. they manage to stay back. That's people that you know they plan way ahead, way ahead and they want to really stay back in China. So what they do is most times what they do is that you know they they've had network, they've done a lot of you know things underneath you know to get some connection kind of. Mm -hmm. So they they establish a company and then you know they they get the visa under their company. But if you're just normal human beings like us without <laughs> without network or without any superpowers you need to find your way it's either you decide to go back to your country or you decide to go to another country yeah. but just know that chinese the, one week the, later ha, after your graduation and they give you your, your certificate almost immediately so it's gonna oh, be like yeah, because of the certificate in the, in the, you're allowed <laughs> you know to stay, stay. you're waiting for the no take it and go <laughs> We are done with you <laughs> <I'm saying, laughs> the certificate will come at most one or two weeks after your graduation. If I, before your graduation, they start telling you, come and take your transcript. Come and take ready. your... Your property is ready. Add it, put it in your box. <laughs> put it in your box so you don't forget it. Hmm. After your graduation, they'll give you a few a, a few days to say your goodbyes. And you know, you keep once you're done, my dear, pack your things. Okay, and so those... this brings us to the concluding point. Yes. And that concluding point is... The relentlessness of the Nigerian educational system. Now, what do we mean by the relentlessness? In all of all these things that we have said, like for China, for Germany, for Nigeria, all of all these things that we have said, the truth still remains that Nigeria actually shaped us. Yeah. It, it gave us that relentlessness. It gave us that zeal. zeal. It gave yes. us that hustle spirit. Because if you have zeal. actually schooled in a Nigerian university, you would understand the struggle. And honestly, that actually shapes you to make you know that anywhere you find yourself, you you, must, you, 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 you have no chance but to excel because you've seen worse. <laughs> and then you are now in a place where okay, oh, they are trying to help right. you. Because mm -hmm. truthfully, in a lot of Nigerian universities, the lecturers are not trying to make you pass. They want you to fail. And they are telling you like, I, I don't know, I'm sure a lot of you can relate with hearing stuff like they tell you A is for God, <laughs> B is for me. If you get C, it means you are the smartest student in the class. So, literally, they're not trying to give you good grades or anything. They're not trying to make you pass. So, you have to struggle. You have to, to make like, sure. You really have to go the extra mile to excel in a Nigerian university. university, which shapes you for when you come to a place like this where there's like an enabling environment, they want you to pass, you have so much resources. Exactly, there's light constant. You know, constant light. You cannot say you don't have light to read or <laughs> you're, you're full of finished in your journey. And that's why you, you don't have, charge your phone and your laptop to pass the assignment. Exactly. Yeah? Hmm. Where you have everything, it actually helps you to be better. That's why, honestly, when you check, you see that a lot of Nigerians are excelling abroad. abroad. It's not because they are overly smart. It's because that whole relentlessness like it has actually really shaped us and it has helped us to be able to you know push hard even when things are so difficult in all of all these countries yeah. so hmm. we have come to the end that brings us to the end <laughs> of this episode of comparison <laughs> yeah and guys guys i know we forgot we didn't forget we just wanted to give you the gist quickly forget. so please time. if you haven't liked please do so now subscribe and comment, leave your comments, you know, in this comment section. Oh, Pete, I want to see that you guys were, you know, fully into this Engaged. thing that we gave to you guys. Because it's yeah. just food that will give you something that you don't give us back. So we need to know that you guys are also into it. That Turn on the notification bell because we'll still be giving you guys hot help. And I know we didn't do like proper, proper, proper intro. intro. So if you have watched this point, here's the intro. No, <laughs> here's the outro because now we are finished. <laughs> So here is the outro. My name is Tammy. As you already know, Instagram handle Purple Times. I'll put all of all that there. This is Ada of Ada's Place. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we are going to edit this, we're going to put our, you, you know, know each everything. Yeah. So please. <laughs> so <laughs> like, head over to subscribe. her channel, subscribe. And, and head over to her as well. I'm going to put her link also in the description box. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching up to this point. We really appreciate the love. We appreciate the support that you guys have been giving to us. And 
we want to know what you guys want like just tell us tell us mm -hmm. we give you just write in the comment section what is it that maybe there was something you wanted us to say but we didn't say, didn't say it tell exactly us, we'll give you we are here for you <laughs> and to also, serve you <laughs> also you can also put your experiences in yeah, any of these, any of these countries, countries. Yeah. or even any other country what are your exactly. experiences maybe your compared experiences. to nigeria yeah because we know that people read your comments and mm -hmm. you know if they can relate you know they will always they, yeah. people just learn one or two things mm -hmm. not just from us but from you as well so just keep the comment section going keep it busy <laughs> and All right, yeah. guys thank you <laughs> bye thank you so much for and we'll see you next time same time same station next week <laughs> <laughs>